Your witness News 16 at 5. And tonight, the Jackson City Council hears an explanation of a train derailment which caused evacuation near downtown Jackson. An audit critical of the Department of Human Services sets off a series of responses and criticism. And an animal rights group is forced to face the facts of having too little, too late. David Hartman has our midweek weather forecast. Mike Rao visits the New Orleans Saints training camp. Join us for these stories next on Eyewitness News 16 at 5. Now, Metro Jackson's number one news at 5. This is Eyewitness News 16. The Jackson City Council questions officials about reaction time and emergency plans after two train derailments near downtown Jackson within a week. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Cal Adams. And I'm Cynthia Bowers. After an emergency evacuation last week when a train carrying dangerous chemicals derailed, the council members wanted to hear an explanation from railroad officials as well as city rescue workers. Eyewitness News 16's Angela Clack reports everybody got a passing grade. All's quiet on the western front today. But last Thursday was a different story. These three cars had derailed underneath the Fortification Street Bridge. He insists residents had to be evacuated because of the dangerous chemicals. When you don't have any idea what kind of chemicals those are on those trains, then I think you should uh, think of saving human life first. Fire said and done today, officials here still were unable to give council members a direct cause for that derailment. State Auditor Steve Patterson dropped a bombshell on the Department of Human Services today. Today, hearings on the Whitewater affair have opened before a congressional committee on a partisan vote. A vote along party lines prohibits the committee from investigating the death of former White House aide Vincent Foster. Bill Greenwood has a background report on what the hearings are all about. Whitewater is a 230-acre real estate development along the White River in Arkansas. Or on the subject of Arkansas, the state of Arkansas has been ordered to comply with new federal abortion laws. A federal court said Arkansas must offer Medicaid-funded abortions. It's a bad weather heading our way. That's right. We've been lucky so far. The storms have stayed to the north, but now uh, up in the Flora and western Hines County, storms intensify. We have some 40 to 50 mile an hour winds may be moving into the Jackson metro area over the next one to two hours. Outside now, the airport reporting sunny skies. It's gotten cloudy here on the west side of town. 85 degrees, a steamy 63% humidity. The barometer is rising. Winds out of the southwest tomorrow until the front goes through late in the day and then skies will begin to break up. 85. Let me show you these low temperatures in the extended period. 72, 71, low 70s. Not bad. Actually, I think an upper 60s is going to be more uh, like it behind that front with less humid. That's going to be the key yeah. starting Thursday. I love it. Yes. Thanks, David. About 200 people have been moved from a popular tourist resort in Oregon ahead of being in Red Cross shelters. You're watching Eyewitness News 16 with Cal Adams, Cynthia Bowers, Sports Director Mike Rao, and Meteorologist David Hartman. Now to Stephanie Bell Flynn in the newsroom who has details of Eyewitness News 16 at 6. Stephanie? Thank you, Cal. The city is running out of landfill space. We'll find out why and what officials plan to do about it. Also, a local minister needs help, we'll explain. And we'll have a preview of Life After Lucy. Cal, Cindy. All right, thank you. Well, some new low airline prices are on the horizon. We'll cover that story when Eyewitness News 16 continues. And there is a new poll concerning the popularity of the Clinton health care reform plan. Also coming up, a blow for animal care in the metro area. And again, lack of money is the problem. And in sports, the New Orleans Saints have a test to see who the toughest really is. Continues. And a report on another anti-Semitic attack in London. We'll look at the results when we come back. To say that baseball is all he is thinking about. Speaking of baseball, the Jackson Generals pulled out an extra inning victory last night. The Gens needed a dozen innings to uh, subdue the San Antonio Missions. Tony Gilmore's sack fly plated the winning run as Jackson won 7-5. That gives the Generals four wins in a row and boosted their lead in the Texas League's Eastern Division to six and a half games. Meantime, it's the early stages of training camp for the New Orleans Saints. This time of the year, the toughest competition can be found between offensive and defensive linemen. They're trying not on that field anyway. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Uh, Cal will have commentary when we come back. 
hard look at the special legislative session scheduled for next month and tell us what's really going on. Someone needs to explain just why the session is needed. Why do we need to deal with so many items? And why these things weren't handled in the regular session? If I remember correctly, the regular session of the legislature cost us taxpayers something more than $7 million for the three months they were in session. Now we're being asked to fork up another $30,000 a day for a special session that could last for who knows how long. I'm positioned at the state capitol. That sure would be working for a living. Now, some would like to see the legislature in session year-round with a couple of months off for vacation, maybe. I've always thought that a special session was for emergency items, for matters of life and death, for the safety of the state, not for matters which should have been and could have been addressed during the regular session. There is no problem to be discussed in the special session that could not wait until January. Besides, it would give the legislators something to do during those first weeks of the regular session, which are normally spent sitting around waiting. For watching. I'm Cal Adams. Better tomorrow.